Hey, what's up? I'm Ashley. Thank you for watching this video. And today we're going to be talking about Cruel Summer Season 2, Episode 6. And let's get started. The events that are about to unfold take place on or around July 30th, 1999, December 30th, 1999, and July 30th, 2000. Let's start off in the summer of 1999, where we see Megan is getting all dressed up for Luke's birthday party that she planned with some help from Brent. She put on a dress, she let her hair down because it's always in a ponytail, and she put on some lip gloss. You know she was trying to pull Luke. Everyone noticed how good and different Megan looked, but she said she was just trying to do something different, but we all know she was just trying to look good for Luke. That's why when Isabella walked in telling her that she broke up with Luke, Megan knew she was excited, but trying to play it off and trying to act all concerned that he got broken up with on his birthday. But Isabella said, no, it wasn't his birthday. It was the day before. As if that's better, because if he was alive today, he would still remember that he got broken up with just a few hours before his birthday. But Megan is anxious about this party. She's got her list and she's not just checking it twice. She's checking it about 10 times. But everyone shows up. The party starts. Luke shows up. And one of the first things he says is, where's Isabella? Megan tells him that she's in the trailer because she feels bad for breaking up with him. But he says, let her come anyway. At the party, Jeff was asking Megan if she would like to go away with him and his family in August, but Megan ends up blowing him off and not even answering him because all she can focus on at this party is the interaction between Isabella and Luke. We get outside where Megan and Luke are literally falling all over each other on the ground in front of everybody at this party. And who has that video camera out recording everything? Jeff, of course, and he's noticing the vibes between Megan and Luke, and you can tell he's standing over there salty. But Megan was feeling salty too when she found out that Brent got Luke a stripper, and she took him over there in the trailer and started stripping for him. Megan was looking through the window, seeing the whole thing. But when Megan and the other girls were dancing to Jeannie in a bottle, and everyone was saying how good Megan looked and they couldn't believe she was out there dancing. And everyone telling Jeff how lucky he is to be with Megan when really he's the unlucky one. When Megan reached out for Luke's hand to go and dance with her and not Jeff's, you can tell that was the last straw for Jeff. He done had it. That's why before the party even ended, Jeff broke up with Megan. He told her that it's obvious that she wants to be with Luke and not him. And he told her that he felt like she was using him as a practice run and I feel like that's a little too far. But we already know Megan don't care about none of that because she was telling Isabella just earlier that day that she had to break up with Jeff. But what I felt like Megan did wrong was when Jeff would bring up her and Luke, she would blame it on the fact that Luke is her best friend knowing it was way more than that. Just before this whole conversation, she was in the other room trying to kiss on Luke. But Luke got so drunk at this party that he messed up the kiss that would have been between him and Megan. He had to run to the bathroom real quick and throw up. But one thing that I found interesting was how Parker stood up for Isabella when Brent made this smart comment. He said, traditionally in my culture, when you break up with someone, you don't crash their party. So Parker said, traditionally in your culture, where is that douchebag island? And I was surprised that she stood up for Isabella because in this timeline, we didn't see them being so close. But we know that by 2000, Isabella was living with Parker because Debbie kicked her out of the house. But we wrapped up the summer by Isabella and Megan finding out that Steve and Debbie were on a date and that's how they started dating. Now we're going to move on to the winter of 1999 where we see Megan and Isabella making plans to go to the Chatham Plunge. It's a tradition in that town where people jump into freezing cold water. Count me out. But as they're making these plans, Megan gets a message from Ned telling her that he has a job opportunity for her and that he needs some extra hands. And you already know, Megan jumps that money any chance she gets, so she bailed on Isabella. So that meant Luke and Isabella went to the plunge together without Megan. And when they get there, some of Luke's friends starts to attack Isabella again about that sex tape that she wasn't even in. After that, Luke and Isabella go inside of the water. They take the plunge. And afterwards, we see them making s'mores. And Luke brings up the fact that it's good hanging out with her again. And how he feels like Megan isn't into him anymore. But that's when Isabella lets him know that 
Megan loves him and that she broke up with him once she found out that Megan liked him. So Luke was surprised by that. But I noticed that Luke was giving Isabella the eye and I said, uh-oh. And when they got back inside of the car, Luke was like, you take so many hits from Megan. You breaking up with me in the sex tape. And Isabella's like, yeah, I know, but she's my sister. You girl, that's not your sister. I think Isabella is so affected by Lisa's death that she'll do anything to keep a friend. She doesn't want to lose anyone else. So as they're in the middle of this conversation, Luke goes in and kisses her. But Isabella immediately pushes back. She's like, what are you doing? She did not want to kiss Luke, but Luke was all up in her face. She was like, take me home. This is when we start seeing Luke's evil side. He's just like his daddy and his brother. And Ned was right when he told Megan in last week's episode that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree when it comes to them. And we see now he was right. But while all that was going down, Megan was over Ned's house in his basement computer lab or whatever you want to call it ned is paranoid that y2k is coming so he's hooked up all his doors and windows with a sensor to where if they open up just a little bit it goes off so he's telling megan that he's worried that when y2k does come he's worried that he's going to be stuck inside his house if nothing does end up happening and i'm like huh so the job that he has for megan is to set all of the clocks forward so that it is y2k just to see what's going to happen inside of the house and i'm like this seems suspicious especially that door that megan noticed and he distracted her by snapping his fingers at her to make her focus and look back at the computer and i'm like what's behind that door that you hiding sir i mean the fact that he cannot unprogrammed what he programmed is just weird suspicious and wild to me and i feel like he's probably setting megan up later that day megan and luke are hanging out and after they hook up that's when Luke decides to make up this lie and tell Megan that Isabella kissed him and not the truth that he is the one that actually kissed Isabella. So instantly Megan is believing him and now she's mad. Luke is dirty and grimy just like the rest of his family and not mad that he got to Megan first to tell her this lie before Isabella can get to her and tell her the truth. Now it's about to be this whole back and forth. They're about to get into this fight and that's probably how Luke ends up dying because he wanted to come over here and make up a whole lie. But now let's move on to the summer of 2000 where it would have been Luke's 18th birthday but we see that ned and megan are still talking and he asked her if that code that he sent her helped her get into the files that she wanted to get into but what i'm interested in are the people who are on and offline who are those people but debbie noticed that megan has a new laptop so she asked her where did she get it from and megan is annoyed and she tells her that she got it from a friend and she put her headphones on like go away i'm done with you my mama would have snatched those headphones off of me them headphones would have been hers and that laptop but the files that they were talking about was getting information on isabella and it definitely worked she was finding out more information about what happened that night that lisa died we see megan and brent at luke's memorial where they're talking about the memories that they have of luke then brent admits that he was a dick to luke but megan reminds him that yeah he was but he's a dick to everyone then Brent and Steve tell the sheriff that he's taken too long. It's been two whole weeks now and it's obviously Isabella. So they don't know what he's waiting for. They want him to arrest Isabella right now. But the sheriff is telling them that he just can't do that like that. So Steve's going to take matters into his own hands and hire his own investigator. In last week's episode, Isabella told Debbie to look under her bed and that's just what she did. She went out to the trailer, looked under Isabella's bed and that's when she found the bag with the sheets covered in blood. As she's walking outside with the sheets in the bag, bringing it back to the house, Steve walks up talking about where's Megan and Debbie tells him that Megan isn't at home, but he's like, this is her car right here. So where's she at? let me inside the house but debbie said no you're not getting inside the house megan is not here and it's good she turned him away because it looked like he was about to go up in there and do something he regret talking about i just want to talk to her it was about to be another case but megan's been trying to get in contact with trevor ever since he sent her that letter telling her about lisa but he's not answering any of her calls 
Megan gets impatient, so she decides to go confront Isabella and tell her herself what she found out about Lisa. Isabella asks her how did she find out, so Megan tells her that she found out from Trevor and that his visit makes sense now. Megan is telling Isabella how it's her fault that Lisa drowned, but Isabella is telling her, no, it's not my fault. Lisa just got too drunk. She jumped inside of the water on her own and drowned and that she tried to jump inside and save her, but when she did, she was nowhere to be found. But it's suspicious that when she did that, she hopped right onto a helicopter and got up out of there. If Isabella is so innocent, then why did she hop on to a helicopter so fast? But Megan starts accusing her for killing Lisa and Luke. And guess who overheard this whole conversation? Parker did, of course, because Isabella is now living with Parker since she got kicked out of the house. And after Parker hears this, she runs straight to the sheriff to tell him what she just heard. When Parker enters the sheriff's office, the sheriff goes, Hey, sweetheart! Such a nice surprise. What is going on in this town? Why she gotta be sweetheart? Why can't anyone keep a secret in this town? Why is everyone so suspicious in this town? When Megan gets home, Debbie is waiting for her at the door. She's like, whose blood is this? Is this Luke's blood? Megan gets defensive. She wants to know if her mama thinks that she killed Luke. But Debbie tells Megan that she loves her and that she'll do anything for her, but that she needs to know what happened. Megan says, and what if you don't like what you hear? And it goes off. Girl, I want to hear it. I don't care what your mama want to hear or if she won't like to hear it. I want to hear it. We all do. Tell us right now. And let me know your theories and thoughts on this episode in the comments so we can talk about it. And if you haven't already and want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.